Hello and welcome to the Walk and Love podcast. I'm TJ. And I'm Brooke. And today we're going to talk about the life changing practice of paying attention to your bodies. The Walk and Love podcast is a weekly conversation between Brooke and I about emotions, rhythms, marriage, parenting, and faith. It's a place where we laugh and sometimes cry as we find language to live a full life. And this episode <laughs> has to snap. been <coughs> the hardest episode we've ever had to record. We have been trying to record. Not because of the topic. Not because of the topic. Not because of, I don't know. Literally no other no, reason no, uh, other than we've other been than bonkers sick. Just we have been sick. And like you can see, if you're watching, you can see tissues are here. I'll try not to blow my nose into the microphone. The first symptoms, which Can I just say blow my nose? If somebody says the phrase blow my nose, my brain goes, okay. hey, welcome to blow my nose pizza, which is what my dad used to say. <laughs> and I can't hear it without saying blow my nose pizza. What was the joke? Just that. Just like that. Like, I don't know. That it sort of sounds like Domino's pizza, I guess. I don't know what it sounds like. It just sounds like an Italian pizza place. Where hey, you say, it's a blow my nose. It's a blow my nose pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so... You said, I hope, I'll try not to blow I'll my nose. I'll try not to blow my nose. Uh, um, <laughs> the first symptoms hit Sunny about three weeks ago on yep. a Monday. On a Monday. And that was the Monday before Thanksgiving. Yep. Then it hit June and Sunny super hard like Tuesday. And then Wednesday, they were just like comatose. Thursday and Friday. Thanksgiving, Friday, Saturday. Like, and then I was feeling okay. I was sick during that time too. Brooke wasn't feeling great. And then... June and Sunny rallied for like a day, and I was like, oh, they're, they seem to be through it, and then crashed super hard. Then I got it. I've had symptoms for about two weeks now. Yeah. Brooke, la Brooke had it for about a week. June had it for about a week. Sunny had it for about two weeks. Daisy's It's unknown. Unknown I think because she had like it first, and then, and then I think she maybe had it again, or I don't really understand. But I, I'm not one to... Like our family doesn't get sick very often. Although this year, what I've been thinking about this year, we bookend our year on sickness. We yeah. got sick traveling back from Christmas last year, which was yeah. in the new year. And then well, we, we got sick. The It was during Christmas. I mean, it was right. over Yeah, Christmas. but like we started the year physically feeling unwell. Yes. And we haven't ended the year that way, thankfully. But like this three-week monstrosity of the flu yeah. has just been, it's just been horrible. Yeah. Like- debilitatingly bad of just like <laughs> I like the, the girls just like did not move off the couch for what se seemed like a week yeah and then it like would come and you'd be like uh, and there were moments where like I think I feel okay and then I would like put dishes away yeah and I'd be like I'm I'm just gonna go lay down yeah I'm not I could it's run like waves I'm not tired I could run a mile if in you need like me to. a 20 to 30 hour loop but yeah, man, this podcast episode it'll get you has been hard to record because we have not lined up feeling well at the same time or being the, awake at the same time <laughs> for the last three weeks, which like I can't remember, <laughs> like that's never happened to us. Like, not even it, when I had a baby. Like it was top ten. It was like top the sickest Sunny's ever been by far. Probably the sickest June's ever been, and yeah. then like top three for you and I. Pro yeah. And so yeah. like j that like there was. There was a moment when we were when we were all hit with it that we were just like Christmas is canceled like we're never going to get better. Oh, I fully believe things this is over like the, our year is is over. Like winter yeah. has come. <laughs> Aslan will never return. That's 100% how it felt. And it was just like not fun. No. Not at all. Uh I'm going to go back to the intro real quick. I I tried to say my name different. I don't know if I okay, did. Yeah. Because Brad from Ellis Custom Creations. I'm sorry, I was listening Brad. to a voice memo from Brad the other day. Brad. Yeah. Brad Ellis. Brad Ellis from Ellis Custom Creations. Yes, okay, yeah, I said that. Um, and we, I was listening to a voice memo and he was pretending to be our podcast. Yeah. And he was like, hi, welcome to the Walk and Love podcast. I'm TJ and I'm Brooke. And he would boop, 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 say it the same <laughs> way every time. And I was like, ah, am I really that predictable? So I, I was going to go real weird. <laughs> And then I panicked. Oh, I'm broke. And I reined it way <laughs> back in to being barely different. Um, so it was close though. Yeah. So the sickness has just been brutal. We had to cancel the live stream. We tried, we did a, you know, a variation of it online, but like it went from like 
extreme fatigue to like head, like some of the worst headaches I've ever had. And I was telling, like I've been telling Brooke, there is nothing more frustrating than waking up with a headache. Cause you go to bed, not feeling well. And you're like, ah, oh, you know, It'll, it's okay. Joy I'll comes just, in the joy morning. Joy comes in the morning. I believe that. <laughs> I'm believing that this night will be the night. So does my headache. And then bam, when you wake up with a headache, you're just like, yeah, Christmas is canceled. Yeah. I, I'm never going to have fun ever again. So speaking of the headaches <laughs> and stuff though, something that's new to us here, which is not, not what we had. We definitely had the flu. I'm, I'm yep. shifting subjects. There is something here called the VOG. The VOG. Which when we first dun, moved dun, dun, here, dun. I was like, everybody's talking about the VOG and a VOG tea that they're drinking. And I don't know what this means. So it's like fog. But it's from the volcano. But it's from a volcano. So it's called VOG. And yeah. it's just like, it's a whole new world. Yep. Some people experience like allergy, cold-like symptoms. And I think that might be when what When you're I'm... downwind from the vault, like when the volcano yep. Mal- fog. Malalani is going off right now. Right? No. Malalani. I don't, that's the street over there. Well, I think I it's don't. probably named after the volcano. <laughs> I'm gonna, you keep talking. I'm okay. I, I don't know the name of it, but it's the, what is it? The largest? The largest act, active, active volcano. volcano in the world. It's not on our island. It's on a different island, but people could see Mount it. Mount Aloha. There we go. That was close. Starts I with an M. Started with an M though. <laughs> Swami, Swami. Swami. Check the briefcase. Swami. Oh, Mama. Samsonite. Mama Lama. <laughs> Mama Lini? Mama Lahoa Laha. <laughs> what you could put together any Melakaliki Maka is going off right now. And... <laughs> any string of <laughs> M's and H's and L's and then and maybe a P um, and put a bunch of vowels in there and I'd be like, yes, that's a real so Hawaiian yeah, word. I'm not sure if like my extended sickness is vog related because it has been like it went from like I didn't feel well to like some stomach stuff. <laughs> Two. Then I felt okay, and mm-hmm. then I got this like s- some of the worst sinus pressure I've ever had. Yeah, I just like broke. Just touch my face. Just touch my face. It, dear audience, sidebar. Okay. It took everything in me not to say over. This is the, I. This is some emotional health here. Except <laughs> I'm gonna backtrack in my emotional health journey just. to sidebar with y'all a little bit, <laughs> which is like I wanted to be like, yes, that's what allergies feel like multiple times a year. Yeah, I have a lot of questions. Number one, how dare you? So, but I didn't. I didn't say that to you. I didn't so, say, "Hey, babe, been there, done that." But my I, whole life. But I believe that we're through it. <laughs> thankfully, yeah, I think we are. And I'm, and I, you know, if, if we're gonna find silver linings in all of it, silver linings are that silver Brooke, vog linings. So the silver vog linings are that Brooke and I, honestly, I feel like we we served each other well because we weren't. Yeah. We weren't at our sickest at the same time. And so like whoever was feeling just like a, just a millimeter better than the other person, like yes. jumped into like, I'm going to take care of everyone yeah. and push through. And then when that person dipped and the other person was like, I actually feel okay. They jumped in and I feel like yeah. there was like some. There was like a three day period where I think Daisy just wandered the house downstairs, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> basically <laughs> unwatched. <laughs> <laughs> because then our babysitter finally came back. Yeah. She wasn't feeling well either. So yep. she took off like the Wednesday before Thanksgiving and then Thanksgiving and yep. Black Friday and like that whole week. And yep. she comes back that Monday and I had sent her a text that morning, which was like, <laughs> you don't have to come back. We're still, we're, all, yeah, we're know. still sick. But if you're feeling okay and you want to come back for the hours, that's fine. Daisy's basically been alone. I'm kidding. Not literally, but like right. has wandered the house during her <laughs> awake times. So, there's just stuff everywhere. Just like whatever she picked up and took and it to Abby's another. And like, okay, sounds good. Like, <laughs> see you at, you know, whatever time. And then she gets in here and she's like, I can see the trails. Like, yeah. I know exactly what you mean. Like, we were missing, like, we have fans in all of our bedrooms. We were missing all the fan remotes. She's yeah. also started putting things in the trash can. <laughs> and so Abby was like, I already checked the trash cans. Don't worry. Check those. And um, I was like, okay, good. Yeah. So, so uh, like, the silver linings are... You know, I felt like we we loved each other well. We never got in any argument or like we never let the like mm-hmm. extreme frustration of sickness escalate us into like arguing about something else. <laughs> and then two, we just like leaned into just like loving the kids as well as we could and just being okay with like movies and sleeping on the couch and sleeping upstairs in our bedroom and yeah. like all the stuff that you just do when you're sick. And we just, it just lasted a lot longer. Like yeah. like normally it's like a day or a night or, you know, two days max. And it was like a week straight. And yeah. so just being okay with that. And then like, 
you know, honestly, like kind of giving ourselves great, like it was a big weekend for us to yeah. get sick with like Black Friday and our warehouse sale and our podcast collection and the print shop and the live stream and all like all that beauty stuff counter. was happening. Brooke had beauty counter stuff and it was just like, we just can't. And that's just, I had to like, it was one of those, that's like, that's just going to be life right now. I just, I yep. can't grip it in my hand. I have to just hold it openly and let that be that. Yep. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, the other silver line is like, we were not sick traveling back to California and Pennsylvania. Like yeah, we've gotten it before the live event, before some of the other big things that we're doing. So like, yeah. we're thankful for that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, speaking of some of the things that we're doing, um, some announcements are in order. Uh, the first announcement is that we launched our business marriage group called Better Ooh, Together with did. Josh, Dr. Josh and Christy Straub. Um, and signups are open on our site, walkinlove.com slash better together or better dash together. There might be a dash. Try both. But yeah. Or it's also saved as a highlight on our Instagram story. So it's a group. I'm just going to kind of paint the picture. It's a mastermind. It's a mastermind group for married couples who do business together. Now, yes. the degree is which you do business together. That That's, there's there's not like a, oh, you guys have there's to. not like a hard line yeah, there. Yeah, like, like Brooke and I do business together, but she also homeschools, you know? Yeah. And so like th there's an element of it's like more just like, your family does business together. Right. Um, and so you could own a business or run a family business yeah. that's like been in the family a long time or it could be or, like, a or organization. Like we've had a few people ask, like they passed our churches together and they're like, would this work for us? It, it's really just like a group a mastermind group for people who run a company, a church an organization together. Obviously yeah. there might be some business talk that doesn't relate to the church, although churches do want to grow and you know, yeah. they do yeah, want to have reach and all that kind be. of stuff. But it's basically just like, what we want to do is we want to provide a community of people with a, a, a very niche community that's like, yes. I run a business with my spouse. We have conflict at times that's business related that like my parents don't understand, my mentors don't understand, my yeah. friends don't understand. I would love a group of people that I could come to yeah. and talk about those things and they would understand. And then also like the the economy of like, we run a business together and our money, like we make our money this way and then it trickles into our family and we use it this way. Like there are so many elements of that that are just like so unique yeah. that sometimes it's hard to feel like, I don't know, that there's like a people out there that get it. And so, oh yeah, because I've had such an incredible time and in integrated, I just felt like, man, I would love for Brooke to be here with me doing all this. And, uh, so I talked to Jeff and I was like, what do you think about me doing this? He's like, oh, dude, I love it. And then he was like, here's all the stuff that we do and all the links. And I was like, amazing. And so it was just like, I just wanted a place where husbands and wives could get away twice a year and be with other people who are kind of in the same boat, build a community, solve problems, find support, and yeah. hopefully strengthen your business and your marriage. Because I think a lot of times in that world, it's like our marriage, it suffers because of our business or our business suffers yeah. because we want to save our marriage. Or I don't we, we recognize that we need help. Like, Oh, yeah. we're kind of struggling. And so we go, you know, we, I'm like speaking hypothetically, like we go to like a marriage retreat, yeah. which is like only f seeming about very like marriagey type yep. topics or even like into the faith space. And then you're like, Oh, let's do this business thing. And then it's like, it, it can be, it can seem very divided. And when you try to like pursue deeper learning or yeah. help or whatever. And then it's like, you go back into real life where they're not really yeah. divided. And, and you're yeah. like, ah, yeah. It's like if the, if the Venn diagram is like, we're married, uh -huh. we run a business together and we're trying to love the Lord. you like, yeah, right in there. If that's you and live rhythmically as a family, yeah, that then this, then this group better together is with, is for you. And honestly, like when we started talking about doing this, I was like, I don't want to do it unless we have someone on board to help us do it because I don't like, obviously we've done this for a long time. I think yeah. we're more than capable. This is sort of me just like, being like, I don't know if I can, but we asked Dr. Josh and Christy and Christy to, to, to do it with us because they are high, high level marriage coaches and family coaches. So they yeah. coach, are they, but he's a doctor. So are they, are they actually, a, is he a therapist? No counselor. Counselor. Yeah. Counselor. So they, they <laughs> counsel like professional athletes, 
uh, yeah. high oh, end lots of people. musicians in the Nashville area, a yeah. lot of military families um, who have extremely stressful marriages based on their occupation or their yeah. lifestyle or whatever. And so the fact that they're on board, like we, you know, I mean, if you listen to this podcast for the last two years, you know that we talk about the things that Dr. Josh has taught about at Integrated. Mm -hmm. And so it'll be two and a half days with him and his wife teaching us. Yeah. Like, I'm glad I'm signed up <laughs> because yeah, he's just, I mean, they're just so good. I think at that what they when do. you work together and well, you're, you're married and you work together, you're, you're trying to yep. do all of it and truly be better together. Go, circling back. Like, I do think that it can feel extremely isolating. Yeah. I think, cause like, I, you know, I have a friend who her husband like does YouTube and she does some stuff too. And it's like, they, they, they work together and they kind of have their own things they're all working on, but obviously they're working together as a married yeah. couple to provide for their family. And like, so often she's like, I'm just going to ask you because I feel like you get it. Like yeah. you're the only other friend who's like, I've been there. Yeah. I understand what that's like. And so, and I'm always like, I told, I totally get it. Yep. It's super stressful. Like, or, or whatever the answer yeah. is, and, you know. And I, and I think that's what I love about integrated so much was like, it just became this like community of like, Oh, I have this tension point. Let me take it to the group. Let me talk about it to the group. And yeah. so this is what we hope to provide for married couples who, who run businesses together. So yeah. we'll put the I'm link excited. and all the info into the show notes. Um, it's also highlighted on our Instagram story, but it is limited. We're only doing 20 couples yeah. um, to, to start because we want to make sure that we provide a super high value experience. And uh, yeah, so we're, we're super stoked on it. Um, it's one of those things that's like, wow, where we actually launched, launched it. Like we've been talking about it for, <laughs> for years. so long. Um, yeah. And while we're talking about things we've talked about for years, we are also launching Tiny Rhythms. Um on Monday. So if you listen to this Monday morning, it's probably available. We're going to give our subscribers on Instagram a few hours to make their purchases before we launch it to the general public. Yeah. Um, but what we had, we were finally able to make a production order of Tiny Rhythms, which is our wooden sort of daily rhythm for your kids. It's a tool that, that can, that parents and kids can use to help your kid understand what's coming, what's coming through throughout the day. Basically like, yeah. Um, <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. Do you want me to explain it? Yeah, sure. I feel like you're, you need a drink. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've talked about it loosely. And it may, and if you follow our stories closely, you've probably heard before. Like, it all started when Sunny was younger. And someone asked how old she was when I was posting she, about it. Like we two. were still there. So she was like between two and three, probably. Yeah. But she was very, she still is. She's a inc like an incredible vocabulary and she's very. She's a great communicator, even when she was young. So, so between two and three, I feel like we people were having full blown conversations. Shocked like, when we tell people Sunny's age. She's not that. She's not even five yet. Yeah, yeah. Um, and she's tall. But anyway, so she was just she would rage. I mean, we, we used to joke yep. about how she's very athletic. Yeah, you know, um, very passionate. Very passionate. And a a lot of times it was because she was struggling with knowing what the day was going to hold. She didn't really have, she didn't really understand her, our expectations of her. And she was struggling with the transition from like, but I'm having so much fun outside. How right. could I go in for a nap now? Or yeah. I'm having so much fun doing this. How could it be time for that? Yep. And so I started writing down on little note cards and taping them to the wall. Like, okay, here's right now. We're at breakfast. Yep. And then we're, then we're going to play outside with cousins, but then we're going to come in for a nap and like mm -hmm. going through the day with her. And we both noticed that it made like a really big change in just like her attitude, her posture, her, um, just like her general presence towards the day. Yeah, it was just like we was were a little bit lighter. You know, we, we want to we train our kids to do lots of things. And then we're just like, okay, now we're going to go take a nap and now we're up and now we're going to run errands. We're going and to it's Target. Like, yeah. They have and, no concept of time. And so it's just like, whoa, 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 you know? And so, yeah. um, it was just like, we entered a training period of like, we're going to really focus on transitioning. Yeah. Um, from one activity to the next. Yeah. And so then we were like, let's, these, these note cards are kind of bothering me. Yeah. They feel a little like let's scattered across something. our house. Let's buy something that is like this. It's like a rhythm s scheduler, mm -hmm. but not in like a time sense, yeah. like a visual thing for, you know, for, cause kids are visual and, and especially yep. Sunny at that age, she yep. can't read. Yep. So, so I always drew little pictures next to it. Yep. And so, um, we looked online and, and we everything couldn't find anything. was, at the time. So ugly. 
It was like... In our opinion, yes. Yes. <laughs> it was either like giant and made for a classroom with a clock and the weather and the date yeah. and the this and the that. And I'm just like, whoa, we don't need all yeah. that. Or it was or just it like... it was just like not my style. Yep. It was like super, super crafty looking or way too like the pictures i was like wow it's like coloring books on my wall i yep. don't need all that right um and so we were like well let's let's see if we can make something something simple and clean <laughs> and, and that and that we would l- and that was two and a half years ago yeah i mean granted, that is time we did have a baby between then we also moved yes and there was also a global supply chain shortage or shortage issue, just like issues and weirdness. so that, that ended up making a lot of the yeah development of it pretty difficult Slow. in terms of just like literally having raw materials. Yeah. Um, but Tiny Rhythms is launching. We have 250 units available and uh, uh, we people are saying they're going to sell out. I certainly hope that's the case. Yeah. Um, but this won't be the only 250 that we have. No, this is just, just what like we were able one. to like produce. Like we didn't want to do the thing where like, oh, we're going to just open it up for sales. And then it's like, oh, Your we ships- sold... Yeah. In six months. Yeah. So these ones will <laughs> ship in January. They'll be finished yeah. by the end of this year and then they'll start shipping in January. So it's like, and then we'll order our next round and kind of probably do the same thing again as we kind of yeah. build this, uh, y- this business. Yeah. Um, and we have ideas for other tools for kids. Uh, it's like tools for kids and parents. Um, I was just going to say what's cool about it uh, other than like, I just personally love it yeah. and I love that we made it and it's like a thing and I can hold it and look at it and be like, Oh my goodness. Like we made this. That's really cool. Um, you know, you think you look at like anything online or any coach or any, anything and they're like, Hey, establish a good, w-, speaking to adults, establish a good wake up time. Maybe have a morning routine. Yeah. Make sure you eat your breakfast. Yeah. Take care of yourself. Like here's ways to feel better or, you know, yeah. whatever. And we, <laughs> we do those or we try those. And then, it's like we don't fully communicate that to our kids. Right. We know that they're going to do those things. Yep. Um, and so I've, I've, because I'm building the website right now, I'm like reading all the research just about how powerful like routines and rhythms are for kids and like what they can provide. And the list is so long that I was like, okay, whoa, I can't yeah. list all these right. things. I'm just going to like pick my favorite to put at the top. But it's everything from like, better like promoting healthy like or like better sleeping habits Mm -hmm. um like it'll actually promote healthier eating if you like if you know when your snack is and you know when your lunch is they'll be hungrier to eat their all their whole lunch um like showing a kid their their routine or their rhythm like um really helps them like in moments of stress Mm -hmm. or anxiety like it helps calm that down helps them know what to expect it encourages responsibility like emotional regulation so long of like all the positive reasons to have a routine or rhythm because that's what it is it's not a to-do list it's not a hard like chore chart yeah it's not like a hard thing like that i mean a chore chart would be amazing but that's separate wow that's separate from A separate from a rhythm. That's yes. just part of it. Um, those things you can totally check off yeah. someday. But like, it's just been cool because like, I know that it worked for us and I have read parenting and other yeah. books where I'm like, absolutely, this makes sense. But then to just like, I don't know, to visually like compile to, everything. And I was just like, yes, this list is to amazing. To me, like, like the hope of the company, like is the hope of the business, obviously hope of any business is to make money. Like that, that's kind of well, the baseline. A business, but, but like, to me, like what I would love to see is like get in a message like a month, you know, after they get them in January, like in February, they'd be like, man, this tool mm-hmm. has radically changed my three-year-old. Like they are like, I, I feel less anxious to go through the day with them. I feel less mm-hmm. like I'm bracing for impact yeah, and more like I'm enjoying my time with my child. And so yeah. like that to me is like, that's the goal that's what we hope this tool provides for you and your little ones. Yeah. Um, and th- that's just the beginning goal. And then we hope that long-term it's like, oh man, yeah. you know, because it's like, we like, especially like our generation, we were just kind of like thrown into school and like, this is what you do. And it was like kind of industrialized of like how we learn things. And now we're realizing, Hey, maybe we didn't learn like actual important stuff. Like we should have, you know, like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to cook any food, but I, you know, the, I know all the capitals. I know all the state capitals, which comes super handy when I'm hungry. 
Um, <laughs> and so it's like, I, I don't know. I just hope that like, it's, it's again, we're trying to, we're trying to raise good adults, not good kids. Mm -hmm. And so I hope that this is just another tool in your tool belt to yeah. raise good adults. Yeah. I think I got a little sidetracked. What I was trying to say with the, like, as grownups, we try to put these things into place because we know they matter. And then we wake up with a kid who's raging and you're like, throw everything out the window, yeah. which is not helping anybody. Right. And so I have found that when we use our tiny rhythms board day in and day out, it, it's, it's, it's it all, it always impresses me and surprises me a little how much it actually helps me go through the day. Right. Because I have laid out what is going yep. to happen and they now understand, plan the shoot, but like, shoot the plan. I, exactly. But like, I understand now too. Okay. There will be lunchtime. It will happen yeah. <laughs> after these things. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so if you're interested in that, it'll be a, for sale, tinyrhythms.com. Um, you know, and, yeah. uh, I'm just excited. Yeah. It's like, this it has been a long, like this has been a long process and, uh, so we've long. gotten so many prototypes that weren't quite right. And, uh, oh. wood can be stained a thousand different ways. I don't know if you're familiar with this. And so, the color of it can, you know, really change the vibe of it. And so it was just like getting all of that nailed down took yeah. a long time. And then magnets, there was like a magnet shortage for a while. And yep. so, and then we like, so originally our boards were, the pieces were, had magnets in them. And this is kind of just dorky talk. And the board. Magnet talk with TJ. Yeah, I magnet like talk with here. TJ. And, and the boards had magnets in them. It was so magnet would, to magnet. So it would like really like lock in and felt cool. Well, then we had two sets and we took one piece from one set and tried to magnet it onto the other set. But it did that thing where like, it was you know, like polar opposite. You know, it when you attach. try to push me and it was like, well, this it's isn't like, going to work. Like oh what, no. if, what if someone buys like, cause our, our, our long-term goal is to have like packs of like additional pieces you can buy like the homeschool pack or the sports pack or yeah. like the, you know, fun activities pack or whatever. Holidays, and so yeah. it's like, well, what if someone buys a pack and they're it's not gonna like, stick to their board. And so we ended up taking magnets we out of one bridges. side yep <laughs> and then, then we googled other magnet talk yep and then yeah, uh and we, then figured we, it out. we figured it out so it was just like there was just so many details and like developing uh, an original product is just something else yeah um and, but yeah. i'm glad we did it and i'm excited it's to no launch wonder it people are so excited about when they finally yeah. launch something and it's just like that's all they can talk and about. it's made I'm in like, the usa which i'm i'm very proud of that's like that really just cool. feels really cool and kind of awesome yeah. Um, so yeah, so, so those are the two big announcements. Um, and then I guess the last one is that we're having a live event. So if you have tickets to the live event, we sent out an email, it came from TJ Mesita. So if you're okay. Googling, if you're looking for it in your email box, type my last name and you should be able to find it. If not, send us a message. We can try to resend it. Um, it also just went to whoever bought the tickets and put in their email. So if someone bought your ticket for you and put their email they for both, the they have the info. Um, but what, but for the general Lancaster County area people, there will be a, a pop-up shop open to the public. You don't need a ticket to the live event to come in on December 23rd from 12 to 4 at yeah. Supply, 280 South afternoon. Oak Street, 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. Yeah. Um, and we'll basically just sell a bunch of stuff that we have left. And it will be like, honestly, probably the best deals we've yeah. ever done. So if I, I legitimately do not know if there will be a line, I don't know, but if there is the, you might have to wait outside until you can get in. Cause only so many people can be in yeah. the building at a time, which is fine. So That's we're going to do like the, clicker the clicky thing. thing. So just maybe wear a coat. Smart. That's just really good. <laughs> you can advice. always leave it in the car if there is no line. Um, but yeah, so we're just, we're excited. We're le we leave this week to head home. We'll have oh, my one word. more podcast this year. If we're going to we try. We're going to do our best um, because we always like to do a recap at the end of the year. Yeah. Um, but today, the topic at hand is a continuation of last week's episode, uh, which feels like six months ago we recorded the last episode. Yeah. About the life-changing practice of paying, attention. of paying attention. So, So last time we talked about sort of the emotional side of that. Yeah. And today we're going to talk about the physical side of that. And I'm just going to honestly let Brooke take it away. Oh, boy. Take it away. Drum roll, please. Um, yeah, well, when we were thinking about the, like, how are we wrapping up this series? I was like, I really like the life-changing habit, practice, whatever, of paying attention. And you can apply it to 
anything. Right. <laughs> like we could be like paying attention in parenting, yep. paying attention in finance. Like you could literally apply it, apply it to any category yeah. ever. But I felt like our emotions was a really strong one. And then just like our, our physical body, like paying mm-hmm. attention to your body. And I feel like it's, it's certainly being talked about more and more. I feel like things like Instagram, if you're following accounts like that, there's more information out there yep. regarding like, why do I feel so terrible or ways to take care of yourself or like breathing, literally how to breathe. Yep. You should breathe through your nose. Like there's so much information out there now. Mm-hmm. If you choose to go down that path of just sort of like learning about it and you know, all the things we weren't taught in school that would actually help you in real life. <laughs> like why do my hands not move? <laughs> Maybe I should figure <laughs> out what I'm eating. That's killing me. Um, <coughs> And so I feel like we've been on probably the most so in the last year. Yeah. Like a, a more of like a physical health journey. I, you know, I think the emotion stuff, the emotional health started like four or five years ago. We 100%. started, which we, we talked about last quote, quote unquote, last week, yeah. whatever that was. Um, or at least I think we talked about, I don't really remember the episode. <laughs> we blacked, we blacked out the day after that Basically. came out for the next three weeks. Yeah. Um, but I do feel like in the last year, we have been, we have tried so much harder to pay attention to what our bodies are trying to tell us. Yes. Um, and so for me, that's looked like a couple different things. Um, one, I mean, I have shared all about my voice issues and my voice story. And there's an episode way back, if you're brand new, called Your Voice Matters, that kind of tells the, the main the chunk of the story. most popular episode ever. Um, but then it was this last May. I think May yep. that I had my third voice surgery, um, which that when I think about paying attention to that, what's interesting is that like, um, you know, my voice issues are such a physical thing. Like it, it physically, they had to go in and remove growths and something. And like, I can't do much about that I, right. personally. Like I need a doctor, I need a surgeon for that yep. kind of a thing. Um, but what I, wish I had done sooner and I, and and I, and I'm trying not to like shame myself into like, you should have, you should have had a surgery sooner. You should have paid attention. Should is a shame word. Right. And I'm realizing how every other sentence in my life, in my head (laughs) says that like, it's it's maybe not that bad, but you should stop doing that. Yeah. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Um, I definitely should. Uh, yeah, it's pretty bad though. And so I, I, I just wish I had, paid attention to how it affects me emotionally Mm. sooner because physically I could to some degree, quote unquote, power through, which is not what you want. If you're like, I'm just going to power through. I feel like that's like a red flag phrase Mm. where it's like, "Mm, you should only say that like here and there. Right. Like you, like I'm going to power through cleaning up the kitchen while everyone's sick. Right. Because that's just the only option. Because it's the only option or like we've, we've planned this big event and I'm not feeling the best, but like, I'm going to, I'm not, I'm going to power through for that. Right. But if like, that's a phrase in your life of like, oh, I'll just power through or I'll muscle through or, or insert your version yep. of that phrase over and over and over. I feel like your body's probably trying to tell you something and maybe get to the root of it instead of just powering mm-hmm. through. And so that, for, for me, that was the voice stuff. Like I do, because it happens kind of slowly, I do get kind of accustomed to the way I sound and the way I feel. And I just, I, I now on the other side of surgery three, I feel the best I've ever felt after a surgery. I mean, it took a, it was a long emotional roller coaster to get to here, even post-surgery. What? Was it? I think, I feel like it. I didn't notice that. I feel like it was. <laughs> um, but I, like I, I said to you the other day, I, at, for the first time ever, I don't even want to hear old videos of myself. Mm, yeah. I'm going to cry. Because it makes me really emotional that, I, I guess it's that I didn't pay attention sooner. Or even more so, it's that I heard it literally, because it was my voice, but like, I, I heard the paying, the internal paying attention voice and I ignored it. Mm. And that is just as, as sad or dangerous or, or yeah. whatever as like not paying attention in the first place. Right. Um, 
And so as far as the voice stuff, I just wish I had, you know, it's probably fear or just like, I just don't want to, I just don't want to yeah. have another yeah. one. I don't want to do this again. Right. Like, shouldn't we be past this? Yep. Here we go. Shouldn't, shouldn't I be past this? Shouldn't I not need a third one? Shouldn't I sound better? Shouldn't yeah. I, shouldn't, you know, and it's like, no, like, you know, and since y'all seem to love anything Bianca has to say, I'll say that Bianca and I were talking the other night <laughs> and we were talking about how when we, when we say things like, I shouldn't feel that way, or I should be, I should be past this or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. using the should, the shame word. Um, when we, when we shame ourselves in the process of something, like if you can see my hands, if you're watching, like right. here's voice issues here is total healing, like on the other side of surgery. And it's like, when I insert all these should phrases in here and I shame myself in the process, I, I, it's like, I sort of get stuck and I don't, I can't just let myself be like, oh, but this is just where I am and Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep moving through it. Right. And it's like, it does nothing. It helps no one. Right. In fact, when you shame yourself like that in the process of something emotionally, it can actually physically in your body. What? Our emotions and our body are connected? They are. Babe, did you know that? I, I, you know, <laughs> I'm learning that. I'm learning that. <laughs> um, it can have very like real phys- physical ramifications mm-hmm. of like halting your healing or st- your, your body's like, I'm trying to tell you something. Yeah. And you're like, no, you're not. No, yeah. you're not. You should be fine. Yeah. So anyway, I, I feel like all the voice stuff has taught me a lot about paying attention to what my body's trying to tell me. But that does feel like something that's very out of my control in the first right. place. Can I add something to that? Yeah. I also feel like what the voice stuff does is like, yeah, like this is like life-changing practice of paying attention to your body. Like you, like, but then also taking action. I feel like there were a lot yes. of times where like your voice stuff, it was like, I'm paying attention. I know it's getting worse. Mm-hmm. I'm telling myself it's getting worse. Like I'm acknowledging that, but then the action was right, slow I'm not in to denial. Come. Like, yeah, oh, I'm like fine. it was I just like, great. Yeah. and I feel like a lot of us can get that way with our bodies where it's like, man, my knees hurt more or I'm just sore or I'm just like, uh, or like I'm moving slower right. or like, I don't sleep through the night anymore through the or night, whatever. Or I can't, bend down and pick things up as easily. And we like pay attention to that. But then the action that we take to like, Hey, maybe I should stretch or like take fit, like get in better shape or lift weights or like whatever that action is, or maybe I need to lose some weight or maybe I need to like, whatever that we may, we may pay attention to the pain point, but then we don't take action to alleviate that pain point. And so I feel like sometimes like that was a lot of the time with your voice was like, I know it's getting worse. I need mm. to take action by calling this doctor. But that that period between the one and the other was long when in yeah. reality it could have been. It was not di- long. This It was not was as not, long this time. It got shorter every time, yeah. which was amazing. But like, and that's the lesson that you learn. Like it's not worth waiting. Mm-mm. It's like once I realize that pain point, yeah. I need to take action or try to find a solution or try to find some comfort or alleviate the discomfort in yeah. some way as quickly as possible. And that, that process isn't, isn't always quick. Like I've had shoulder pain for, I don't know, two years and I've tried oh, at least Sunny was an infant, lots of different things when, yeah. to, to alleviate and try to help that shoulder pain. Yeah. And so like that first started with just like, I'm going to stretch and I'm going to like, and then there was like a point where I went to physical therapy for a while to try yeah. to figure it out there. And then it was like, what I realized, what I realized this year was like, it's actually, I think just weak. It's mm-hmm. not that it's like hurt. I think I just, my left shoulder, my left side is weaker than my right side. So now what I've noticed so your is your body's that like off as, it's like that, as I'm lifting weights and like, what's great about CrossFit is like, you're like, okay, we're going to do dumbbell snatches on the right side. And then you're gonna do them on the left side. Like yeah. you do sort of that balancing work by default. I've noticed vast improvements. Yeah. And so it's like, you don't talk about it like you used to, your it, shoulder. you know, so like where it's, it's taken a lot of years to figure it out, but it's not like I felt that shoulder pain three years ago and was like, okay, three years later, let me see if I can figure it out. Like, mm-hmm. it, you know, like there, and, and so I think that's, it's like the ladder. It's yeah. like the climbing, the tiny little rungs yep. to get to this point versus like <laughs> reaching up for rungs. But that that's so key because reach. I do feel like there's probably people listening there like, Oh, I know exactly what my physical pain is. Mm-hmm. I know exactly where my physical pain point is. 
I just have not taken any steps to, yeah. to sort of alleviate it. And not that all physical pain can be alleviated, but, but a lot more can than I think we, we, yeah. we believe. Yeah. And I like, I feel like I need to be like, this is not medical advice. Like, <laughs> yeah. I feel like I need like a disclaimer. <laughs> uh, again, this is just what we've been learning. This is just our story yep. as always that yep. we're sharing, but you know, our, our body, I mean, it's the way God created us. Like our emotions, our spiritual health, our mental health, our physical health, like it is all so integrated and connected mm-hmm. as it should be and as we were made. And I sometimes feel like, I don't know if it's like just our culture or our time of the world we're living. I don't know like what a hundred percent what to attribute it to, but I feel like everything has been so like separated. Mm. Like there's mental health over here and there's emotional health over here. And there's like, you know, let's just like, like not connected at all. And so then you're like, okay, I think I'm struggling with that one. And you just like pick one Right. when I'm like, I think if we could just like shove these all back into the same circle and you could think of yourself as a, whole being that is everything in your body is talking to itself as it should be or hope you know and if it's not that's what you want to work towards like I just feel like that's when you can start to see bet like you can see more clearly what some of the issues might be right or like see a little bit more progress when you're like oh that thing that I experienced emotionally years ago and never processed is crazy as it sounds like causing some of my back pain Mm -hmm. like that's a that's an obscure example that i totally just made up but like that kind of stuff she actually did make it up (laughs) like that that sounded sort of like (laughs) i just made that up oh (laughs) oh yeah oh like from a friend's asking (laughs) no but like (laughs) like our bodies are made to process through emotional stuff and then we have we've all again we have all these areas of that we hope are in health mm-hmm. and they're all connected and when we ignore one or the other i just don't think we are our fullest healthiest self and and what's cool is that like once you start paying like like i'll i'll use your example of everything being separated that's true that's 100% true that's so accurate and it's like you know and i won't get into the cultural like uh, weirdness of it, of just like how someone can be like a hero and they're just like morbidly obese or what, like there's just ask, like, you know, this person well, is always like a, such extremes. I yeah. mean, I was going to give the mental health thing. Yeah. Like you have somebody who's like claiming and preaching all this mental health stuff. And then if you're looking at the whole circle, the whole picture, it's like even kind of easy to see from the outside, like, okay, but I think maybe if you touched on this point, this point, right. this point yeah. in your life, the said point might improve yeah. again. I, I hope I'm, we're not being like so blanket statement. hundred percent. You're like all but, up in arms about something. But there was but, this, so in, in the power of habit by Charles Duhigg there, I think that's his name. There was this Duhigg, Duhigg, Duhigg? I think it's D U H I G. I think that's what it is. Okay. Um, there was this study that was like, uh, it, it, it made this group of people pay attention just to one area of their life. Yes. Like I think it was their, their weight. Finance. Oh. No, no, no. It was two groups of people. One group was just supposed to pay really close attention to their finances. And one group of people was just to p- pay really close attention to their like weight and physical Define, health. Define pay attention. Like, like actually do something like, about let's it. Let's improve. Let, let, let's just, like just be on the ball financially, have a budget, like don't yes. spend too much money, all this kind of stuff. And then okay. one group was like, let's pay attention to what we're eating. Let's have a calorie deficit diet. Like let's try to lose weight. They were taking action in their paying attention. hundred percent. Okay. Both groups got better at the other thing as well. Like the finance group actually ate better and were healthier. Yes. And the health, health, the health, the fitness group took better care of their money. Yeah. And so like that, it's like they're connected or something. It's almost like they're connected. And that is what's so (laughs) magical about sort of like, the authentic journey of taking paying attention, like not in this like self weird self love kind of bull crap that that culture pushes, <laughs> but in like, Ooh, I'm sweating. Are we getting too hot? Are we getting too spicy here? This but episode? in like in a real authentic way of like, God has given me a physical body. I want yes. to honor it. Yes. It is the temple of his Holy spirit. I want to take good care of it. Yeah. Uh, God has given me one life on earth to live. I want to make sure that I am devoting it to him in an act of worship and praise to the glory that he, all the glory that he contains, all that kind of stuff. 
And so it's like, when we start to do that, we'll start to see, like for us, it started with emotions yeah. and like understanding our emotional health and well being, and like how to regulate and talk about them and pay attention to them and, you know, be adults about them and mm -hmm. communicate openly about them and like do the hard work on, in that area and pay attention to that. Yeah. That now has trickled over to the physical side of our physical bodies where yeah. we're like, okay, if this matters so much, so does this. Yeah. And, and, and so does our spiritual health. And so does like, and so and I will say that it, it's similar to anything, anything else you're trying to change all at once, like suddenly using all clean products. Like it can feel very overwhelming yeah. to try to fix all those things all at once. And so I think like, I w I'm, spe I'm, pre I'm speaking over myself. I will not shame myself into thinking, hey, back when we started on emotions, we should have also started on X, right. Y, Z. Yeah. Because like it, it can be a lot. And so I do think though that all the dots start to connect if you just head in the direction. Yeah, you just climb those tiny little rungs. And so like <laughs> what's crazy is like Brooke and I, we've been married for 13 years. I think so. And our marriage is stronger than it's ever been. We're, we are healthier than we've ever been. And honestly, I feel like we physically are now entering an era, an era of our lives where probably the best, we're taking the best care of ourselves physically that we ever have. Yes. And that feels very good Yeah. at 37 and 36 because like, it's not just like, oh, we want to like look good in the mirror and take gym selfies or whatever. It's like, <laughs> no, our girls are seven, four, and one. We want to be here and we want our physical bodies to keep, to be here as in the best way that they can be for as long of their lives as we can. Like yeah. that is, and so we are going to pay attention to those bodies in all the ways. Yeah. I will also add, like you saying, like, I want to be here for them. I agree. Like long-term, like what you're talking about, like living well and like literally living a long time. Yeah, outside of some sort of like, you know, catastrophe. Right. What I hear though, when you say is like, I want to be here for them. Like to me, it's a very like daily present thing. Like if my body feels like garbage and I'm exhausted and yeah. I'm eating terribly like Daisy and, I, <laughs> and I'm not, and I'm not taking care of myself. I'm not phys <sighs> I'm not present yeah. mentally or emotionally then for my girls on a daily basis. Right. Not even just like, I want to be here in 50 years. Right. Like, like that sounds great, yeah. but also like for me, it's a very in the moment thing. Yeah. So like one of the things that, you know, y'all are well acquainted with Yulia. You know that we've gone to see Yulia many Yulia, times. Yulia, our Ukrainian for our, uh, masseuse. Uh, like a deep tissue massage. And painful. I- Painful. It is pretty painful, but then you feel great. And you feel awesome. Um, But so we started going to her because we were paying attention to how we felt. Yeah. And how parts of our body felt, how much like tension and tightness. For me, and, like, Yulia was like, maybe she'll help my shoulder. Right. Like that was my honest, like maybe she'll, my, my shoulder will feel better if yeah. I just. And mine was like, I think I'm supposed to be able to turn my head. <laughs> and I've talked about this before <laughs> because this was beef jerky neck years ago on the podcast when <laughs> she told me like, yeah, you kind of feel like, because I was like, explain to me. The if you're here. new here, like it, if you, and you haven't listened to this episode, I was trying to get a d different masseuse, her name is Annie, to explain how my muscles feel. I said, so can you, as, as somebody who does this as a job, like I assume you can physically feel a difference between somebody who's really tight and really not and like d try, yeah. attempt to describe that to me. And she was like, well, right now you sort of feel like I'm rubbing beef jerky. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so great. I love that she just said it. <laughs> you know, coupled with, do you ever drink water? I think that was one of her questions. <laughs> and I was like, eh, sometimes, but she's like, by the end of this massage or the, by the end of you coming regularly and me working on you, you should feel sort of like a crock pot roast, like yeah. really just like loose and fluid and all these things, which is where beef jerky neck came into yeah. play. And so I, I was, I was paying attention. I was going, then we moved. I had a baby. It was like all these yep. things. We had a house. Y'all know. And then it was like, okay, I can't turn my head again. Yep. And so I need to figure out. And I was going out. to this gym and Yulia goes to the gym and I was like, yeah, all right. we saw, you saw our card. And so we booked it and went, I went first and you went, I think the next day or mm -hmm. a couple of days later. Yep. 
Um, which we it's don't, when she stood on my back. And yes, we don't need to retell the whole thing. But it was her because we had because you and it went only a couple days apart, maybe even like yeah, one twenty four hours yep. apart. I had asked her, "Who is tighter?" No, I I did because I went second. Oh, she told you. Yeah, and she goes, well, "You are tight, but Brooke is just inflamed." Yes, and right. then I went back and had a conversation with yeah. her about it because I remember speaking to her about yep. it, and so. Yeah, she. nobody had ever told me that my, quote, tightness I was feeling mm-hmm. in some parts of my body was not actually muscle tightness. It was like extreme inflammation. Yep. Um, like my neck and shoulders, that's definitely still tightness. That's like being pregnant. That's looking down at kids. That's yep. like years of sitting at a computer, looking at a phone. Like that's kind of normal. Um but the other places where I was like in pain, it was all inflammation. And so I, I asked her, I said, okay, so what do I do? And she was like, no sugar, no dairy, no gluten. And I was like, oh, so no happiness, but okay. okay. <laughs> so let me just backtrack there. Um, and so I said to her, I said, well, I have, I've cut sugar before in my life for different things yep. for like 20 days or a month or, yep. you know, whatever. And I, while I do feel better, I've never been like all this pain has gone away. Mm-hmm. And then I've cut dairy before specifically for the longest period of time when I was nursing Sunny, I yep. cut dairy. While I maybe felt a couple things better, I did not, again, yep. like my calf pain, my joints, like there a lot of my other stuff didn't that, go away. <laughs> so Brooke, we're laying in bed and she's just like, just like do you ever just not want to get out of bed because like your calves hurt so much to walk and i'm like no no they used to used to call me dinosaur hands and feet because <laughs> yeah. in the, used to joke that in the morning you were gonna throw something at me like think fast yeah because my hands don't work in the morning yeah. my hands and my feet would be so what i would describe as tight feeling mm-hmm. turns out it's inflammation um and so i yes i said so it's got to be the gluten i'll give it a try and here's the thing maybe it was just my like misconception as to what that can look like or feel like for people. I can't say that I'd ever done a lot of research about it, but I just feel like, again, this is what I was processing. Whenever people would talk about being gluten-free or their reasons for being gluten-free, it was either they have like actual celiac disease, like a, a, Mm -hmm. I mean, it's all real, but like a very like diagnosed thing, or it felt very much like, um, intestinal like like stomach issues like kind of if i like let's say if i went to an ice cream shop in las vegas just hypothetically and and ate ate a a banana split you felt like people were talking about their gluten intolerance like that yes like i just always sort of like you're gonna fall against a uh, really like a lot with like digestive issues and which it can be for people so anyway come home from my uh semi assault feeling massage. And I was like, all right, I'm going to Google like signs of gluten intolerance (laughs) or whatever, you know, had I done what I Googled that week, it would have been on there for you. And I had like nine out of 10. Yeah. And here's what's crazy though, is that like I was paying attention in some capacity to all of those things. Uh I knew I had nine out of 10. Oh, I know that. I know that about me. I know that about me. That sounds like me. Yes, yes, yes. But what I had never done is lump them all. In. They were very divided for me. Mm-hmm. These like three calves. symptoms. These three symptoms are yeah. because of my allergies. These two symptoms are because I've had a baby. These two symptoms yeah. are because of whatever. And I had never thought about like what if all those symptoms are in one category? Yep. What's that? And obviously, this is not like a fix-all concept for somebody to be like, hey. Hey, listener, put all your symptoms into one category. Maybe there's your answer. That makes it sound so simple. And like, it's super hard to figure stuff out health wise and diagnose stuff. Um, But for me, I had never done that. And so I think I cut gluten like the next day. Yep. And that was like at the beginning of the year. That was sort of like March. Somewhere in early spring. Yeah. Um, Yeah, because I had cut it by the time Nick and Lindsay were here. Yep. And so it was somewhere in like March. Um, I haven't gone back. Because turns out that was a lot of my problems. Yeah. And it's been sort of like revolutionary to your physical health. Yes. Like my hands and feet work in the morning. (laughs) My calf pain. Like my, like they used to just ache. Like Mm -hmm. I used to lay in bed and just rub them with the back of my other foot. Like maybe if I can rub out the knots. Because that was my description. Yeah. Like I feel like if you, I used to ask you all the time to rub my legs. Like can you just, they hurt. 
And you'd always be like, well, don't your calves hurt at the end of the day? And, I, and I'd be like, Or no. I would push on your lower stomach and be like, does it hurt when I do that? And you're like, no. And I'm like, okay, maybe I'm not pushing hard enough. Does it like, like I, <laughs> Elbow kept, drop. I kept waiting <laughs> to get to the point where you'd be like, yes, I see what you mean. And you never would. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay. And I would just kind of ignore it or yeah. not figure and it I, out And I do more. feel like, like, you know, we were talking about this the other day. <laughs> Women blame themselves, men blame others. And so yes. there's this element of just like, well, it's probably just something I'm doing. Like, I don't know. I, I don't want to bother or anybody I ha- about it. I had it. babies and I've had or, two C-sections. Yeah, like I don't want to bother just anybody. Be that. Or I don't want to like be a burden to TJ or like, I don't, you know. And so it's like, th- again, it's like we're paying attention to our physical bodies. Yeah. But then that, from that point to, to the, to the point of taking action, there is such a gap in our lives from this to this. And it's like, once we start realizing that like, oh, I've paid attention, then I took action and then life got better. Mm -hmm. I felt better. I, you know, I was more engaged, more, more aware, more present. Like once we start seeing that happen with one thing, like you'll never make that mistake again. You'll never well, get to the point of like. Here's what's interesting: if you just if you take even health out of it, and you go up another like yeah. umbrella level, to just like the practice of paying attention, and the time it takes to take action. Yeah. And that was that like you paid attention for a year to the fact that you felt like you were supposed to stop walking love, yeah. and the time until you took action was a lot longer. Yeah, it's so when I felt like we were, well, I was paying attention to the Holy Spirit, to like God, to what I felt like He was telling me. To move here, there was a way shorter time frame. Like days. No, it felt now looking back, yeah. it does feel like that. But you know, to when we took I mean, action, it was minutes from when you said it to when I text Jeff. Well, that's because you are an <laughs> uber quick start, and I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Maybe don't hey, te- maybe yeah. don't text him anything. But and anyway. so so I I think like you know again like my my hope for this like the, the life changing practice of paying attention is that like there are some of you listening who think who are thinking like i know i know what this is right i've known what this is for a year or two years or three years or six months or three months or one day or whatever and some of you are like but i don't know like it might just be something else or i won't feel that much, I won't better. Feel that much better like it's not really impacting like, my life your physical body is the is the vessel that you have before you go to heaven it's the only thing that you have to take you through this life And so you should honor it and value it as the gift that it is because it's been given to you by God. And so like we should take care of it. And so do not talk yourself out of taking action to try to make it better or improve it or not, not, not improve it, but just like take the steps to take care of it so that it can take you through this journey of life well. Yeah. And, and a lot of us have just like kind of fallen into the trap of just like, I guess this is as good as it's going to get. I'm not a professional athlete. I'm not like one of those people that go to the gym. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Yeah. Well, I, again, I'm not a professional athlete, but, but what I've done this whole year is just stayed consistent with one thing, mm-hmm. which was CrossFit. I just decided that's going to be my thing yeah. and I'm going to stay consistent with it for this whole year. And it has improved not just my physical shape, but my mental shape, my emotional shape, my spiritual shape. Because yeah. when I know that like when I move my body and when I can like get the blood pumping through all my organs and blood yeah. vessels yeah. and limbs, like it, it does something magical to you and it is so worth it. And so like if you're paying attention and you feel like uh, lethargic and sort of frustrated or just like like you're not engaged or you're just like, I don't know, depressed or th- there's just so many aspects that can be improved by like physically moving your body yeah like it is such a powerful tool at our disposal is it always fun no like i see again it's like you know more and more and more and more and more and more research is showing that like moving your body can be something like a walk yeah it does not have to be i think maybe down the road it should be and could be something like crossfit lifting weights those kind of things lifting heavy weights has been like there there are so many studies now that it's like Lifting weights is such a valuable thing that our culture has lost. Lifting weights and walking. Yep. That style of cardio. <laughs> yep. Not like sprinting your brains out so that you lose 10 pounds and look great in a bikini. Yeah. Like extreme, you know, if you love to run and sprint, I'm not suggesting you are extreme, yep. but like, that's how we think about things, yep. right? Or so many people do like, oh, I never, I haven't worked out in nine months. So I'm going to like run really hard, which does nothing except make your legs hurt and your <laughs> knees hurt. And then you can't run the next day because you tried too hard. But 
I also, I will also add like backing up to paying attention to your emotions to last week's episode. Um, I feel like so many of us are taught, even if it's sort of subconsciously taught at a young age to ignore our emotions, to suppress them, to be like, they don't have anything to tell me. Mm -hmm. They don't know what's up. They're wrong. They're incorrect. They're this. And that trickles over into how much we ignore our physical bodies. Yeah. And I know that there's a connection there for me. Um, I said this to you in bed last night, which is, it's this, it's the most silly example. We were, I was trying to leave for the beach with the big girls. And in my mind, I felt like the process of leaving for the beach was taking longer than I would have liked. We, we had no time frame. We had nowhere to be or not be, but like, I felt like it was taking mm -hmm. too long. They were, girls were already in the car. Everything was packed. I had to pee. I've been holding my pee this whole time subconsciously. I'm not thinking, hold it, Brooke. I, it's just like, I just was, <laughs> I just was holding it. And it's like, like Mel Gibson and Braveheart. <laughs> hold, hold. Basically. <laughs> and so I, this is so kind of embarrassing and dumb. And so I thought to myself, I'm not going to go here. I'm just going to drive to the beach and go when I get in the ocean. <laughs> Because to me, that felt, I don't know, like a better use of my time. I didn't want to make the girls wait me longer. It was a very much, my needs don't matter. And this is where it's, it's such a silly example. Mm -hmm. But it proves its point. Because it's a version of my needs don't matter. The girls being discom uh, uncomfortable in the car or us taking too long. Which, again, where yeah, is that no concept Santa. coming from? Yeah. And so I was like, no, Brooke, go pee. So I went. I peed, took less than a minute, came back out, felt really great. And it was so silly, but like I do stuff like that a lot. Mm -hmm. And if I'm doing something like that here and there over peeing because I, because it might make people waiting on me uncomfortable that I like, yeah. that I'm taking that much longer. Like to me, that's a very like, okay, there's some chairs behind there, yeah. mm -hmm. which is like your body's not really telling you anything, Brooke. Like yeah. I believe that or have or it doesn't matter. That. Like, or, or it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah. Your actual body doesn't matter or your, your needs or your emotions don't matter as much as anybody else's. And I know that that can be harder for me because of my like personality, my mm -hmm. natural, like just bend towards how I see life. Um, is like, I don't want to disrupt anything. I don't want to be the cause of any like discomfort for anybody ever. Um, but something well, as silly and, as and that. And because I was of that, like, I've put myself in extreme discomfort. Yes. For, or I minimize what I'm actually feeling, yeah. which is like, I, I should be able to move lip parts of my body. Yeah. Right. And then you just, you get comfortable with it. Yeah. And if you like had <laughs> explained to me in detail, like all of your pain. But that's just it. I was never. I, I feel like I would have taken like yeah you would been have been like that's a lot of things that like, don't hey. feel good but it was always like even just the way you mentioned like does your stomach ever just like kind of hurt and i'm like yeah. oh, i mean if i eat a ben and jerry's banana split yeah but like <laughs> not when i just lay here or again not to make it all about gluten but like one of the for me one of the symptoms of gluten like in intolerance kind of extreme sensitivity is like brain fog yeah like just feeling like what like, which to me, I attributed to like, well, I've had kids, kids and it's postpartum I'm tired and, yeah, and it's this and it's that, well which like, whatever. Th yeah. that stuff should eventually go away mm -hmm. eventually. Yeah. And so that's where I hadn't put them all in the same bucket. Mm -hmm. And so like, <laughs> so we're, you know, again, we kind of covered a lot of topics, a lot of, we talked to for a while. Um, I feel like the, the goal for this last episode of the life changing practice, uh, which we could again, go into all of the, like we have more life changing things that we we try to do, but we're going to end it with this one. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll circle back to this series, like again in the future is like the life changing practice of paying attention is like s that in itself is so important. Like pay attention to the stress points in your life, yes. the emotions that you're ignoring, the physical pain that you have. And I, I feel like that's part of it. That's the life-changing practice of paying attention. But I feel like we should add and then <laughs> take action. Yeah. Because like, Do something about because it. Because your life won't change until you actually take action. Nothing to, changes if nothing changes. If nothing changes. And so mm -hmm. if you feel like, man, like even if Brooke is talking about gluten, you're like, I, I know have I didn't mean to make this a gluten all episode. those symptoms. It's just... Like maybe that's something that you should look into. And if you feel like, man, I have just like been depressed and I feel low energy, like 
again, I'm not saying go and do CrossFit for a whole year, but, but there is an element of just like physical activity that is so valuable and important to us. And I'm not even like a gym guy. Right. I'm not like a, or I can add a separate story. Like a friend was telling me, she's like, I was feeling terrible. I was exhausted all the time. I was tired all the time. I felt like I could, like, I didn't feel like myself. Like when you say that phrase, that means, you know, a version of yourself yeah. well, that's different. And she's like, and I did all these things. And so I finally went to the doctor. It turns out I'm like severely anemic and all I needed is an iron supplement. And she's like, back at it again, feeling totally like yeah. herself. And she's like, if I had just ignored that and been like, it's just because I'm stressed right? or I'm just tired because yeah. of this and didn't like take action in the physical body realm. Now, has she done other things to deal with her stress and all that? Absolutely. Which has helped. Yeah. But she's like, uh, within a week of taking that supplement, I felt like there she is. Yeah. Or and if like, like when Yulia was you. like, you know, you are tight, but she is inflamed. If you're just like, oh, okay. Like, that's cool. Like, yeah, but it was just like that phrase basically has made you like, gluten free. That is, so, I can change that. Yeah. Um, and then, and then I'll, I'll, I'll sort of end with this sort of, again, <coughs> seven wing eight. I'm going to end with a challenge. We are about to start a new year and a new year is always the time when people are like, I'm going to start to get in. I'm going to get in physical shape. I'm going to eat better. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going, I'm going to gonna... do, I'm going to do all the things. <laughs> and, and, and there's like some spiritual side, like there's a spiritual element to that where people are like, I'm going to have a better quiet time or I'm going to read more books. But a lot of us feel that physically. Like I just want to feel better I think this physical year. Physical symptoms often make the list of like, what do I want to change? Yeah, in like, you know, if you asked a hundred people what they want to change, I think a lot of them would say, I want to lose weight. Like, I yeah. think that's, or get stronger or get stronger or, or whatever. And yeah. so it's like, and we all get gung ho and we buy the perfect gym outfit and we're like ready to go. And it's like, but the tool won't change you if the practice isn't in place. And babe. so there's this reel <laughs> that's going around. That's like, what if you just gave yourself one year of like mm. a really amazing diet and sticking to your physical fitness and just like not, not a month, not a day, not a week. What if 2023 was the year that you're just like, I'm just going to do it. Yeah. And people might naysay or people might get like think that I'm not going to make it or whatever. And like, but if imagine, imagine yourself on December 31st, 2023, after a year of like, I'm not saying perfection. I'm not saying that you never had a bad meal or yeah. never skipped the gym or never yeah. went to Krispy Kreme and ate a dozen donuts. I'm not saying <laughs> that, that, that it's going to be a year. You of, had a gift card, babe. It's fine. <laughs> I'm not going to say it's going to be a year of perfection, but just imagine if you just committed yeah. To one year of like, I am going to do this because my physical body matters because it's been given to me by the creator of heaven and earth. And I'm yeah. going to show him how much it matters to me. Yeah. I think something miraculous would happen in your yes. life. Yes. And it well, would permeate through all areas. It would affect your whole life. It would. And it's the ripple. You know, one of my, and I've said it before on here, one of my favorite little phrases is a year from now, you'll wish you'd started today. Yeah. Because me as a, like I procrastinate, this is my personality. I procrastinate because whatever I'm, I don't want to do out here is that feels uncomfortable. So I'm going to procrastinate. And then I get to the point where I'm so close to this thing's deadline or whatever it is that now the discomfort of it not being done is worse than the discomfort of yeah. me not wanting to do it. And so I flip a switch and I go into action. And often then I have way too high expectations yeah. for how long I've waited. Yeah. And so that's why that, that little phrase of a year from now, you'll wish you'd started today makes me emotional at times because I just feel like it speaks so deeply into what I actually want for my mm -hmm. life. And I often don't take... Yeah. the action. And so I'm paying attention. I know what I should have, I should start uh, like today. Mm -hmm. I know, I know that answer. And so, you know, I, I, your example of like a, uh, a physical fitness in that sense is good. But like, w you know, for me for a while, it was like, I need to go to bed earlier, sleep mm -hmm. a year from now. I'll wish I had started today going to sleep before, you know, I don't make up your own thing that you need like before nine o'clock at least three times a week. Again, it doesn't even have to be every day, but like if I did that and I, and I do that pretty frequently now, like that, yeah. that's, that's in my rhythm, but like, it, let's say I hadn't like a, a, a doing that for a year of like listening to my body saying, you need more sleep. You need more sleep than maybe your spouse or some of your friends. And when you're like, oh, you only sleep for that long and you feel fine. Like, again, wasn't listening to my body, which was saying you need more sleep than most people. Yep. And I was like, no, it's fine. I'll just power through. 
Right. Watch power through. Yeah. And be totally disconnected during the day and not present and, you know, brain inflammation from my gluten. And this is just all fine. It's just all <laughs> fine. And it'll all be fine. I feel fine, except I don't feel fine. And so I think your challenge is super strong and super good. And I think if there's that little like nagging voice inside, po- positive nagging voice, maybe not nagging, yeah. just the little voice inside of you that's like, you should, you need more sleep or you need to drink more water. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> or you should go on a walk for all of the reasons every day or whatever. Like I just, I just hope that if we could move into the new year, even into the ho- this brief little holiday season that's before us, like, with just that perspective, I think it could be, I don't think, I know it would be huge. Yeah. For all 100%. Of us. Yep. So. Final thoughts? My final thoughts are like, you know, challenge yourself in, in the, as the new year approaches. Like. It d- will feel like a challenge if, if you've do never like, done anything like, like it. You know, and, and, and like find someone to do it with and then track it. Like take a picture or a video of you trying to do a pull up on January 1st or a push up or whatever <laughs> it is. So that when the end of the year comes and you've stuck with it a whole year, you can say, man, this is where I was and this is where I am. Like that yeah. is an, that is an incredible feat. Like I couldn't even push myself off of the ground yeah. and now I can do 10 push ups in a row, not on my knees. Yeah. Like that yeah. is incredible and it, and it's worthy of documenting. Yeah. And like, you don't need to post it anywhere. You don't need to make a social media page for it. You don't need to like tell it like, but find someone that's going to hold you accountable to it and like, and just and, and and don't don't say I'm gonna do it like just commit to doing it for the year. Like don't just like say oh I'm gonna try this. Like really yeah. kind of in your heart of hearts put the the flag in the ground and just be like this is it. Like yeah. I'm done feeling this way. I'm done sort of making the excuses. I'm ready to like step into this like new way of living. Because yeah. I'm I even in 2022 I, I I made some drastic changes in terms of like physical fitness Mm -hmm. and even now i'm like man 2023 is my year yeah like that's the year that it like we're gonna see i think that it it, other than like you worked hard and you showed up and you did the work but like you get you told yourself i'm gonna do this in 2022 this is this is a whole new rhythm and routine of life for me not just like i'm gonna try it for 30 days yeah because it is way easier to give up on a 30 day yeah. Semi instant gratification, like that. It, that's that concept. Like if it doesn't happen immediately, it's not for me. And it's like when you think about, and I'm going to devote a year to this. Yeah, I just feel like that perspective shift is like sets you up for success. Yeah, so much more than like this quick little fix yeah. of an idea. And then just like find people that will either like hold you accountable or the people you can do it with. Like you know the gym that I go to on. in yeah. Maui is like some of the best group of people I've ever exercised with. And like, I don't know them outside of the hour I spend with them in the gym. Like, you know, I don't, you know, and so it's like, that is so beneficial of just like, man, I like these people. I can show up and they show up. And like, there's an element of just like accountability there. And it's like, yeah, you could go at it on your own and you could try to document it by yourself and like do it all by yourself. Like that's just going to be so much harder. And so like, if you have a fellow butt clencher that's like, hey, I, I felt <laughs> like I felt like TJ was talking to me that like in 2023, I want to get physically fit. Like, will you do this with me? Mm-hmm. Like, can we do this together? Mm-hmm. Um, because I just think like, again, like a year from now, you wish you would have been like, I wish that was me. Because right. like, yeah. again, and it, it, like it doesn't all you all you're saying is amazing. But like we start off talking about paying attention to your body as a whole. And I think physical fitness is a large part of that. But then I also think there's like this, well, they're connected. They're not separate. Like the health side, like for me, I could have gone to the gym and never cut gluten. Right. I would still be having some issues. Yeah. I would feel stronger. Like I'm not saying one's necessarily better than the other, but like what I need to do now is is integrate going being more physically active in a fitness perspective into my life but like whatever you feel like that thing is that's like that little voice is saying to you start there don't overthink it (laughs) yep um i think that's all we got yeah i'm glad we're back (laughs) feels good to be back we're both upright and awake at the same time i probably need a nap after this though um (laughs) thank you guys for listening thank you for making us a part of your week okay Okay, i love love you bye. bye